Hello lovely viewers, you are most welcome to our channel Poetry Online. In this video, we shall be discussing the summary, analysis, themes and characters of The Marriage of Anansuwa by Ifwati Sunderland. Kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get updates on all our new videos. Once again, let us assure you of a very interesting discussion. Get ready for this lesson. Ifwati Sunderland was a pioneer of African theatre, prominent Ghanaian playwright, poet, producer, children's actor, teacher, research scholar, and social worker. She is best known as a dramatist, but her work is informed by a vision of a better society which she believes could be established through imparting suitable cultural education. She is recognized as one of Ghana's dynamic voices and employing traditional theatre for promoting social change. As a creative thinker and activist, she used her talent and skills in educating the future generation. Educated first in Ghana and later in England, she returned in Ghana in 1950. Efua Sunderland co-founded Ghana Society of Writers in 1957 and the literary magazine Ochami in 1961. In 1958, Efuati Sunderland established the Ghana Experimental Theatre in Accra. In 1960, she received funding from the US-based Rockefeller Foundation and the Arts Council of Ghana, and the Experimental Theatre became Ghana Drama Studio. Initially, she established the drama studio as a workshop for children's writers, but it soon became a training ground for Ghanaian playwrights providing an outlet for creative new theatre. She wrote in both Akan language and in English, besides a number of essays, articles, short stories and poems. She also wrote short biographies and books and plays for children. Efuati Sunderland began her career writing short stories, but she discovered that Theatre or drama will have a wider reach in the newly independent Ghanaian society, where most citizens were illiterate. She pioneered an indigenous movement in writing, publishing, and development through drama. Her best known plays are Furiwa, published in 1962, Edufa, 1967, and The Marriage of Anansua, 1967. In The Marriage of Anansua, a 4C Sunderland develops the Akan act of storytelling called Anansasem, which includes elements such as musical interludes and community participation. The Anansasem literary means Anansi stories. This is the term used both for the body of stories told and for the storytelling performance itself. Anansi is the spider trickster in Akan oral narratives, Efuati Sunderland develops the traditional Akan spider tale into a new dramatic structure, which she calls Anansi Gro. The play recreates the communal storytelling atmosphere with audience involvement, songs, dance, and a storyteller who interacts with both the players and the audience. Anansi Gro is Efuati Sunderland's new theoretical form which emphasizes on rhythm, music, and dance. The four-act play, The Marriage of Anansiwa, centers around George Kweku Anansi, the famous spider trickster of the African oral narratives. In the play, he is a crafty modern individual who uses every opportunity to acquire wealth by cunning and fraudulent means. Act 1 sets out Anansi's problem, which is poverty, and his plan to solve it. Anansi devises a scheme to use his daughter's physical beauty to secure not only one, but four suitors for her. He selects four rich chiefs and shows them a photograph of his marriageable daughter. He invites them to formally ask for his daughter's hand in marriage, while not informing them that each one of them is competing against three other chiefs. He masterfully and tactically leads each of the four chiefs to believe that he is best suited for his beautiful daughter, Anansua. Hmm. The world is hard. It is hard. The world is really hard. 
Oh, and as you are, the way is that a brother I bought for you at the price that nearly drove me to sell myself. Bring it here. Oh, father, is it raining? And unwittingly types the letter that her father dictates to her. However, when she realizes that the letters are for securing her husband for her, she begins to protest. She accuses her father of selling her like some parcel to a customer. Her cunning father calls her ungrateful and reminds her of all the suffering that he has gone through, all for her sake, and finally convinces her of the necessity of such a plan and demands a cooperation in ensuring the material well-being of the family. No. Having to stay at home for nearly two weeks because your fees are on. And the man was still straining to find the money. Yes. I brought it out to you. That the principal of EB Secretarial School, my son that he is, will remain merciless. That he will not hear of your return unless I pay. Unless you are carrying the money in your hands. Right or wrong? Right. Uh -huh. Now, let's turn our attention to that object there. That machine. That typewriter. After you've gone out and returned home today, for the last installment of that typewriter, which you need for your training today. No. Good. So you agree there is need? Oh, I know it. And what's the burden of that need? On you, father. Well said. Correct. 120,000 clean sonic seeds. I'll take that to the miserly principal of EP Secretarial School. My fee? Correct. You can return to school tomorrow. Oh, Father! <laughs> now we shall see. Hey, my daughter. Now we shall see which one of those four chiefs will make the best husband for you. What? Oh, that's the story! You are standing there smiling saying that's a story. What's the story? Oh, the letters you just post to me for me to post. What? Huh? Of course, that's the story. Of course what? <laughs> You're making me feel like crying. Oh. What is that you've done to me, eh? I knew that I wanted to marry a chief, eh? Who oh, no, all those orgies of yours? Have they ever seen me? Now, who told you they are old? Huh? You've never had set eyes on them. They, of course, have seen you. Where? Oh, they have seen your photographs. Simultaneously, he also arouses her interest in one of the chiefs, chief who is chief, who he describes as finely built, glowing black, large eyed, handsome as anything, courageous, and famous. In addition, the chief has already given Anansi some money with which to pay Anansiwa's secretarial school fees. Consequently, Anansiwa becomes interested in this chief. Hey, hey. So, what's the name of the chief as you have described? Hey. 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 Large eyes, handsome as anything, courageous and famous chief, 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 chief. I mean himself. But who are we to have expectations about him? You know what? Ask him about it. But just the same, you first type the letter which I posted to him. I'm walking around this world playing. Oh, the toiling I've taken it upon myself. Who suffer for you? And you rise against me. I get it. I'll not let you sell me like some parcel to a customer. Okay. I won't sell you. So stop attending school. Pack short your training and do without your certificate. Oh, Father, eh? Please have patience, eh? She you think I'm walking around this world and playing games? Oh, my loving father. Oh, daughter. My lovely daughter. Oh. In Act 2, Anansi's scheme is successful. 
He gets rich. With the gifts received from all the chiefs, he improves his lifestyle considerably, renovates his house, and buys new clothes. Hey, I'll go on you! Can't you sympathize with a man when you can see him getting hot under the collar? I'll fetch the electric fan out here to blow more breeze around me. Yeah. I mustn't permit the face to take me by surprise. Are you looking for me? Oh, no, sir. I'm looking for Mr. G.K. and I I thought uh, this was A.W. 6615 sir. Well, you didn't think wrong. I am he. Sir, is that all? I beg your pardon, sir. In Act 3, tension mounts as all the four chiefs are interested in marrying Anansua. Each chief chooses a date for the customary marriage, the head drink ceremony, a token by which the marriage is legally established. Unfortunately, all the chiefs chose the same day for the ceremony. Anansi is caught up in his own web. He needs to solve this serious problem before it lands him to trouble. He finds a solution by getting Anansi to feign death. Then he invites his mother, Aya, his aunt, Ekua, and his friend, Christy, to the outdooring ceremony for Anansiwa. He cut short the ceremony and sends back his mother and aunt on the pretext that enemies have set fire to their cocoa farm in their hometown. My mother and my aunt are leaving for Nanka immediately. So suddenly? Immediately! They mustn't stay here to see what it has become necessary for me to do. Because they won't understand. <laughs> The world is really bad! Hey, sir! Is this weeping you are weeping? What is the matter? Yes, sir. What is that? It has become necessary for you to go to our hometown. Because it is getting a trouble as well. Okay. Ah. Huh? Yes, sir. That guy itself. Someone has just reported to be that. Hey, 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 Enemies have set fire into a holy home. I go home. What? The home? Hey! Akwa! Akwa! There is the telephone. Still thinking of the news. I heard a book for me. What is the book? I heard someone saying book. My capital, which I invested into a book. All ruined. All those lovely cocoa trees. In the final act, the message of the unfortunate death of Anansua is conveyed to each of the suitors. Hearing the news, the chiefs send their condolences along with their gifts. The six messengers of the chiefs inadvertently reveal the real intentions and motives behind the chiefs' decision to marry Anansua. Three out of the four chiefs desire to marry Anansua with ulterior motives. It is chief who is chief, through his messengers, revealed that he has set total responsibility for everything concerning the woman who had but one step to take to enter his home. Therefore, from his hands, here are all requirements for a funeral. Finally, the messenger points out that it is the desire of chief who is chief to do for Anansua what a husband does for a wife. Thus, it is Chief who is Chief who is really sincere in his love for Anansua, even in her death. My time is up!
Anansa is so overwhelmed by the chief's gesture of affection, concern, generosity, and thoughtfulness that he goes into a trance and evokes his ancestors to bring Anansiwa back to life. See to it that she returns to life. Wake her. See to it that Anansiwa awakes and returns to become a bride. At the invocation, Anansiwa wakes up as if from a deep sleep and exclaims, Father, I could hear Chief Fu is Chief calling me. I could hear Chief Fu is Chief calling. He was indeed calling you. His love has won a victory for us all. Ah, honorable ministers, I, I am dumbfounded. The power of love ostensibly triumphs over death and the play ends on a happy note. Let's now consider the major characters in the play. Anansi. Anansi uses his wit to not only survive but also gain material wealth. He is pretentious and condemns wealth. Yet, in order to prosper, he does not hesitate to auction his human possession, his daughter. He is resourceful, clever, and cunning. He turns an established custom to his advantage. He encourages all the four chiefs to shower him with gifts for maintaining their object of interest. He is cunningly confident that he is not obliged to give his daughter's hand in marriage until the head drink is sent for an answer. Yet, he panics, revealing his fatherly care and concern for his daughter when all the four chiefs chose the same date for the head drink ceremony. However, he successfully spins another web and revolves the issue to his own advantage and secures the groom whom his daughter has fallen in love with. Anansi's success lies in his knowledge of society and human nature. He is very secretive and does not reveal his plan to anyone. He gets Anansiwa to type the letter for him but does not reveal the purpose of the letter to her. He uses his own mother and aunt for performing the outdooring ceremony but hurries them away with a lie when he does not need them any longer. He takes Christie into confidence only when he wants her to help him attend to the visitors and Anansi confuses the whole community with his fake mourning. He is able to chief even the great leaders of his society who are four prominent chiefs of the land. Though he considers his daughter a priceless possession and the chief's objects of interest, he cares for her enough to empower her through education and make her independent. While cashing in on the social custom of bright prize to acquire material comfort for himself, Anansi also wishes for his daughter, the best husband, who will respect and care for her. Next is Anansiwa. Anansiwa is Anansi's only daughter. Unlike the Akan folk tales, where Anansi has no daughters, Anansi in this play has a female daughter and she is his only child. Anansiwa is a 20-year beautiful young and educated modern woman. She is an intelligent woman and expresses displeasure at being denied the freedom to choose her own husband. She objects to her being sold as a commodity to some old chief with 50 wives. However, when her father speaks of the possibility of a handsome, strong, courageous and famous chief, chief who is chief, she decides to leave it all in her father's hands and trust him with a decision of getting a suitable partner for her. And she is rewarded for believing in her father because, among all the four chiefs, it is chief who is chief who reveals the new love for her. She may also be seen as a submissive daughter who has no will on her own. However, it is significant that she submits to her father's will, which allows her to be manipulated only after she is sure about who she is going to marry. Though it is Anansi who spins the web around her, it is Anansi who controls the thread of her father's web. Aya Aya is Anansi's mother, who is a loving mother and grandmother, embodying traditional values. Her gift for a grandchild is a prayer for Anansi to marry a good person with respect for fellow human beings. Respecting traditional culture, 
She serves as a contrast to her son, in whom the value are distorted by the Western materialism, illustrated by his trickery and his desire to amass wealth by any means. Christiana Yamua Christiana Yamua is a fashionable woman. Anansi describes her as worldly wise and a helper and supporter. She comes to help Anansi and Anansiwa. She takes care of Anansiwa in the outdoor ceremony and tries to win Anansi's heart. She is out to impress Anansi's mother in an effort to marry Anansi. And when Anansiwa faces death, it is Christy who takes the responsibility of receiving the chief's messengers and their gifts while Anansi mourns the loss of his only child. She also carefully guards Anansiwa's body, ensuring that no one goes too near. Other characters, Ekua, Anansi's aunt and Aya's sister, understands and accommodates the younger generation. The couple, Akwesi and Akosua, perform the abugu to emphasize the point that the suitor has no claim over the prospective bride until the head prize ceremony is performed. The storyteller, as a genial and astute commentator, the carpenter, mason, painter, and the postman are used to comment on the priorities of the society, which values wealth. The chiefs are not seen on stage, but we hear about them through their messengers. They are all rich, generous, and love flattery. The property man is a stage manager and not necessarily a character in the play. Let's now consider the major themes in the novel. Bright Prize marriage and love. The play examines how the tradition of bride prize is used by Anansi to exploit suitors to his material gain. Marriage becomes a kind of auction where the bride is sold to the highest bidder. The play questions the idea of a daughter as a human possession, an object and a commodity to be sold in the market of matrimony. The play's meaning can be found in its climax where the four chiefs respond to Anansiwa's death. It is only chief who is chief, who wins Anansiwa's heart, because his love goes beyond customary rituals. What is of significance is genuine love and total commitment even in the face of death. It is true love that brings back Anansiwa to life. The role of women in contemporary society the play also interrogates the role of women in contemporary societies. Anansi is clearly in charge of all the women in the play. His daughter Anansiwa, his mother Aya, his aunt Ekua, and Christy, a fashionable woman. He manipulates all of these women to suit his needs. However, Anansiwa and Christy are bad his plans as long as he suits their purpose. The play can also be seen as a critique of a society which views women as being hailed largely due to their beauty and their ability to captivate marriageable men through their physical charm. The play also questions the tradition in which women are marketed around for the benefit of the family or community. Survival and materialism in post-colonial times. The play also focuses on the survival strategies of the impoverished Anansi. He cannot afford the fees of his daughter Anansiwa, so he plans to get money through cunning and fraudulent means. He is also interested in acquiring wealth and comfort for himself. This materialistic motive of Anansi and his new riches are mocked and ridiculed. The play satirizes the hope and aspiration of people to get rich by dishonest means. It is also a satire on the contemporary attitude of respecting the rich. Thus, the postman starts saluting Anansi only after he acquires wealth. The play also explores the following themes. The theme of communalism. The theme of polygamy. And the theme of tradition and modernity. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share this video.